pie any are like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones of the mathematical world. They seem to pop up everywhere and we're always meeting them. Of the two though, E is probably the less familiar because we don't normally run into it unless we do more advanced classes in school uh, where we are doing things like logarithms or exponentials. But E is at least as important as pi to mathematics. So let's take a closer look at it. The value of E is 2.71828 and so on without repeating, a little less than the value of pi. Like pi, it's both irrational and transcendental. Irrational means that it can't be written in the form of one whole number divided by another. Transcendental means that it isn't the solution of an equation such as x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. In other words, a polynomial with whole number or rational coefficients. Unlike in the case of pi, there's no one obvious definition of E. It comes out of many formulas, any one of which could serve as a definition. But a simple way to understand it is to think about a problem in compound interest. In fact, E was first encountered in this way by the Swiss mathematician Jacob Bernoulli in 1663. Suppose you deposited £100 in a bank which offers a 100% annual interest rate and pays annually. At the end of the year, you'd have £200. Now, suppose instead you go to another bank which offers the same generous rate but pays biannually. You'd receive 50% compound interest every six months, and at the end of the year, you'd have £225. Clearly, there's an advantage in having the compound interest paid more frequently. If the interest accrues monthly, you'd have £261.30 by year's end, and if you pay daily, you'd have £271.46. Compounding the interest at shorter and shorter intervals helps, but there's a limit to the advantage you can gain. In fact, if the interest were compounded continuously, by the end of the year, you'd have 100 times E, or £271.82, rounded to the nearest penny. Another situation where E turns up has to do with exponential growth. An exponential curve is one defined by a number raised to the power x. The slope or steepness of such a curve increases as x gets bigger. The slope of the exponential curve 2 to the x at any point x is approximately 0.693 times 2 to the x. The slope of 3 to the x is approximately 1.098 times 3 to the x, and so on. Always with exponential curves, the slope is proportional to the height. But there's one special case where the slope is exactly equal to the height, and this is the curve e to the x. Not only is the steepness of the curve e to the x equal to its height at every point, but so is the rate of increase of the steepness and the rate of increase of the rate of increase of the steepness, and so on. Like pi, E has a habit of appearing when least expected, and in areas of math that seem totally unconnected. Suppose you have two packs of playing cards. You shuffle both of them independently, then deal out the first card of each deck, the second card, and so on. What's the probability that there's no match, that no two consecutive cards dealt are the same? The answer is almost exactly equal to 1 over e. In fact, it's given by 1 minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial all the way up to plus 1 over 52 factorial where factorial, for example, factorial 4 would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And this sum is within 1 over 53 factorial of 1 over e. The probability of no match gets closer and closer to 1 over e as the number of cards in the two decks is increased, providing there's only one of each card in each deck. Google, the internet services company, has a particular fondness for e. 
In its stock market launch in 2004, its stated goal from its initial public offering was to raise E billion dollars, or to the nearest dollar, two billion seven hundred eighteen million two hundred eighty-one thousand eight hundred twenty-eight dollars. Later, in a search for talented recruits, it put up billboards in Silicon Valley, Seattle, Austin, and Cambridge, Massachusetts, that read. First 10-digit prime found in consecutive digits of E dot com. Anyone mathematically savvy enough to figure out the cryptically named website could visit it to find this message. Congratulations, you've made it to level 2. Go to www.linux.org and enter Bob's your uncle as the login and the answer to this equation as the password. And I've put the equation on the screen here. Finally, those who found the value of F5 and went to the site shown would get a message inviting them for an interview. Congratulations, nice work, well done, Mazel tov. You've made it to Google Labs and we're glad you're here. I hope you've enjoyed this little excursion into the fascinating world of E. Leave any comments you have below and I'll see you again next time.